get started on our small baskets. Today we are using this nice chunky yarn in soya and oatmeal. You will need two balls of yarn if you want it to be two different colors mixed or you can use one ball of yarn using the center and the outside at the same time. But I'm using these because I think it looks nice together. You will also need a pair of scissors, a crochet hook. We are using a five because the yarns are quite thick on both of these. If your yarn is thinner, you will want to use a smaller size hook so that it stays um, tight. And you'll also need a darning needle later for doing your ends as usual. And for keeping track of our rounds, because we're going to be working in a spiral, but by the time we finish we also want to know where we're changing. Well, not where we end, but we'll want to know where we need to change our stitches. So we're going to be using a piece of yarn and we just flick it back and forth. You'll see how to do it. It's easy and you have it. But it's always handy to use a different color than what you're using to make your basket. Okay, let's get started. So I am going to start getting the centers ready from the yarn. Um, how to do it is, first of all, there's usually an end, at least in these ones that are produced locally in Kenya, there's an end always tucked into the middle. So we get that out first and I wrap it around the outside of your skein so that it does not get in the way later. That'll cause you problems. And then and there's the two holes. So you go in with your fingers on both sides trying to stay in the center of them and eventually your fingers will meet and that should be the middle of your skein. Okay, and then it's just luck of the draw, what you pull out. Sometimes you're lucky, that was pretty good. Sometimes you're not lucky, you pull out a big chunk. And in these yarns you can also pull out like a bonus piece of yarn. They'll have an entirely separate piece inside. So that's the one ready to go. I'll get this one ready and be right back. Um, so you put your tail over your fingers, wrap it around two fingers making an X. Wrap it loosely around three fingers, holding it with your thumb. Flip your hand over so you have short strand and a long strand. Put your hook underneath the short, catch the long, bring it through, point it towards yourself, point the hook away from yourself, grab the long loop strand, I suppose, and pull it through the loop you made by twisting your hook. And that's your magic ring. Okay, so chain one, and you're doing single crochets. So to do that we put our hook in, bring our hook back, and I'm going over the tail and the ring all four of these guys here, and we do a single crochet. If you're not familiar with how to do single crochets, we'll have another video uh, up showing the different stitches. So we're going to make 12 single crochets into the center of this magic ring. Basically we're making a perfect circle for all of you who know how to make a perfect circle. We've done a couple classes on that and it is actually a very handy thing to know for doing all these other patterns. You don't really have to read it as much. You're like, oh yeah, it's a perfect circle. We know how to do perfect circles. Oh, I dropped one. That's a problem. Okay. So single crochets, we're going to make 12 single crochets into the magic ring using both strands of yarn. Let's see if we're getting close. 
um, the chain in the beginning doesn't count. We ignore that one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, we need to make three more. Ten. It's getting f fat. I'm going to pinch down. Eleven. And twelve. Okay. So now the good part about magic ring is the adjustable part. So now we pull our tail. Let's make this part a bit bigger. Take my hook out. We pull our tail. Getting a bit tangled there. And we will shrink that loop as good as we can. You want to get it as small as you can without breaking your yarn. The good thing about Kenyan yarn is it's pretty strong. I think I've only broken it once, touch wood, but um, it's pretty strong, so you can really give it a good yank. Oh, there we go. There's still a bit of a hole, but you can see it's pretty small. So the tail from your magic ring, you hold up here, like throw it over the front of your work, get your hook back in, and your hook size back down, your loop size. Now we're going to do a single crochet into the first single crochet. You can tell it's a single crochet here. This is your chain, your chain stitch. See, it's a bit like on an angle. It's kind of down inside there. So not that one. We're doing the first one that's the same height as the rest of the circle. So it's this guy here. Let us get our yarn piece. We'll put our stitch marker in there. It will be marking the end of our row and where we join to the next round. So now I will make my single crochet. And I'm keeping this tail kind of like in the way. It'll keep it up at the, at the next round so we can go over our tail and not have to sew it in later. So there's one single crochet and we will do another single crochet. And you can see the stitch marker. It's just a piece of yarn, but it's hanging in there. So that's marking where we joined our round. Okay, so now in every stitch around, we're going to be doing two single crochets. And you can tell your stitches, if you're not sure, it's these two loops. That's a stitch. And the next one we're going to do is this guy here. That's a stitch. So we're just going to work our way around and going over our tails as well. So two single crochets, one, two, all the way around. So continue around when you get back to the stitch marker or the piece of yarn. Um, we'll pause the video now and when you get back to the stitch marker, start up, we'll meet here. Okay, so we've gone around, we've done two single crochets into each of the stitches. We finished our second round. So we are going to throw our stitch marker yarn, oh sorry, backwards. Um, and you just kind of hold it back and out of your way. That one's the down one. Just so it's ready for the next round. Now for this round, which is the third round of a perfect circle, we are going to be doing a single crochet, one single crochet into one stitch, and then two single crochets into the next. So we're alternating between doing one single crochet and then doing two single crochets um, into each stitch going around. So the next stitch we're going to start here we're going to do one single crochet 
and then the next one we're going to be doing two single crochet into the same stitch. So we're just alternating all the way around. So when you finish this round, um, stop when you get to the stitch marker and I'll meet you back there. When you're getting to the end of your row, the last stitch, the last stitch you should be doing your increase. Um, if you're not doing your increase on your last stitch, there is a chance, well you probably did, uh, mess up or get a miscount in your stitches going along in that round. So this is our last stitch and that's our increase. So that's how we're pretty sure that we don't have to count our stitches, we're probably on track. But if you get here and you're just doing a single, you're not doing an increase, um, yeah, you might have miss, messed up a little bit. It's not the end of the world. It's not that important um, that your increases are in the exact same spot because it's the bottom of a basket. It's not, you know, it's not the most important thing in the whole world. If you are fussy about it, go back and put the stitches in the right order. If you're not that fussy about it, either... Um, take out a decrease that you did or don't or add a de or add an increase here it's not it's not um, the end of the world I have done double crochet single crochet so I'm doing a double crochet to finish my round which is a spiral so it's a bit tricky to keep track of which is why we're using the string which I just pulled up oh no that out of the way. Okay, so two single crochets into here. One. Two. And we'll put our yarn over the front now to mark where we're, we're spiraling. But that's the, where we are. Um, and for this round coming up, we're going to be doing a single crochet, a single crochet, two single crochet. So one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way around. So we'll get started on that. Make sure I'm going into my stitch. I don't want to lose a stitch. Sometimes you have to pull your stitches back to see the stitch you need to go into. Okay, so but it'll get easier as we get bigger. One, two, now we're going to do a double. Well, we're doing a single, but we're going to do two singles. So one, two, into the same spot. So continue like that around single crochet, single crochet, two single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, two single crochet. Continue all the way around and I will meet you when we get back to our stitch marker. Um, so for this round we're going to be doing one single crochet into the next three stitches and then two double crochet into the fourth and we continue that all the way around until um, we meet back at our uh, stitch marker. All right, now you can see on my um, the base of my basket, it's starting to wobble. It has like a like if you make it flat, there is a chunk that wants to stand up. Uh, basically, it means I've added a lot of stitches. Uh, it's not as um, the diameter is not as big as the amount of stitches I have because I am crocheting quite tightly. Uh, but you can see what I'm talking about there. There's a little whoop. So, yeah, see, it's weird. So what I'm going to do is in this round here, instead of adding any increases, I'm going to just do one round of single crochets. So this could happen to you now. It could happen to you when it's bigger. Usually it happens to you when your uh, circle is bigger. But if it starts to wobble, you do a round of just single crochet or whatever stitch you're doing for your perfect circle, but just one in every stitch. You, you stop doing the increases. So I'm going to do that now just to show you. 
if it happens to you, it's fixable and you don't have to totally go by the pattern. You can say, this is what's happening to my work and I'm fixing it. So that's what's happening to mine and I'm going to fix it. So I'm going to go all the way around one single crochet into each stitch and I will meet you back at the stitch marker, hopefully with less wobble. Okay, so now we're back. I've gone around. I've made just one single crochet into each stitch going around. It is still a little wobbly, but not anywhere near as wobbly as it was before. So what I'm going to do is in the next round, I'm going to put my increases. And then the following round after that, I'm going to not do increases. So I'm going to alternate between doing increases which is adding two stitches into one stitch and then a round of not adding stitches into one stitch. And for this round we are going to be doing four single crochets into four stitches so um, or one single crochet into four stitches so single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet and then two single crochets into one stitch. So one single crochet into four into the next four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth and we continue that all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker. Okay so we're back at our stitch marker. I think I mean it's fine it's fine but it's not perfect. You see it's got a little wobble to it which is fine obviously but I don't want to wobble, so I'm going to do one more round of just this one single crochet into each stitch. And I will meet you back when we get to here. And it should be almost the right size for my scissors. Yay! And we can start doing the sides. Okay, so see you back when you get to here. Okay, so we've gotten back to our stitch marker. So we'll throw that behind and keep, kind of keep it out of the way. Um, there's still a bit of a wobble. It's so thick. <laughs> it's great, but it's really thick. There's still a bit of a wobble. Not much, but if you push it all down, you can see there's probably like that many stitches. Too many. So like two, more, two stitches too many? I don't know. Something that keep it from being perfect. So for this round, uh, this round, I'm just going to put one single crochet into each single crochet until it is flat, which I think it will be after this round. And then I think it's big enough to start doing walls. I think my scissors will fit in there uh, just great. Okay, so now we've done one single crochet all the way around and we're back at our stitch marker. You can see it's laying down quite flat pretty good. It's pretty great. It's still nice and um, really thick, which I like. It's very basket-like. Um, and it's big enough for my scissors. There's still a bit of a wobble in it. That is going to sort itself out. Now what we're going to be doing is doing one single crochet into each stitch all the way around forever until the sides of our basket are as tall as we want them to be. So how it'll work out is it will start laying down flat until there's not enough stitches to be comfortable in a flat circle and then your walls will start. So if you have extra wobble these rounds will be laying down flat like your your base will be increasing. If you don't have any wobble like you've made your stitches looser and um, uh, you don't have wobble, then your walls will start sooner. So generally two rounds of the of your first walls, of your first knot increasing, will be laying down flat. So it will be getting larger by two rounds. Uh, so just plan that in your head. If you want it to be like this tall, this big, this round, and then walls coming up straight, then start your non-increasing two rows before. Okay, so I've done one round, but I thought I would just come back and show you. My wall is already starting. I'm so happy. You see that little shadow? So cute. 
So that happened right away. So I guess that's that's lucky for me. But I did do those rounds before of the no increasing. And it's flat like a little dish and it has a little wall starting. Okay, so we've done a few more rounds, probably about five. Uh, it's nice and dishy, so the sides are coming up quite well. Um, and because when you're crochet, you always crochet prettiest towards you, the inside's always facing you. And we have been crocheting like this, which means the inside is the outside. The inside is the pretty side. So now that it's a dish enough, it's dishy, we can flip it inside out. This makes it a bit easier for crocheting too. Like so. And now we can crochet this way around. And this stitch marker is basically, it was just to kind of keep us lined up in the in the base when we were doing our increases. So we could see when to change the number of increases when we had completed a round. Now that we're doing the sides, we don't really need to keep um, flipping it each round to keep it going up with us. What All we're going to be doing with it when we finish is using it on the side to estimate uh, where the what you call it, where the round is going to be complete, where we'll end our work. But it, we don't have to um, keep putting it up. You can if you want to, but it is not, um, it's not required. Okay, so I've done a bunch of rows. And I think, how many have I done? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rows that have come up on the sides. And that's about as much as I want to do for this tutorial. So my needles fit inside. I mean, my hooks, my scissors. It's pretty cute. I am approaching the area where my stitch marker is. So I think I can do about one more stitch till I am at the same place. So I'll do one regular single crochet. And then we'll do two slip stitches. So slip stitch and another slip stitch. Now I'll just make my a little bigger so you can see. On the side, you can see it does go down. Once we get rid of that end, it'll kind of be like that. Um, but along the top, it's quite flat. You don't really see a big difference. Um, and then to do the edging on the top, you can even leave it like this. You can slip stitch all along the top just to make it like a simple little basket. We were going to try to do a crab stitch, which is basically a single crochet going backwards. So instead of going forwards, as we always do, we go backwards. And it also it looks like a rope going along. So it'll be like a fatter edge along the top of our basket, which I think will be pretty cute. So we'll chain one. So basically we're going backwards. Instead of going forwards this way, we're going to be working our stitches going this way. So it'll give us a nice a nice finish. Let's give it a try. So into the last stitch behind. The first couple will be a bit tricky because they are slip stitches. And getting it through is also a bit tricky. Okay, and then you pull it up and take off two. Okay, so we'll continue like this, making reverse single crochets all along the top, and I'll meet you back here when we join. Okay, so we finished doing our reverse single crochet or a crab stitch all the way back along. We've made one in every stitch. It is nice and flat at the top. It looks, it's, it's, hot, it's heavy duty. This is a lot of yarn. So now we're going to slip stitch 
into our first crab stitch like so and we will cut our yarn um, we used less than half of each one for this size basket uh, so you could probably make this size basket out of one hundred gram skein of chunky yarn and now we're done with our stitch marker we don't need that anymore we ended up in the same see we ended in the same area so that's fine so we'll pull out our stitch marker be done with that that's garbage and there's our bottom of our bag, our side, our bag, basket. And then let's just finish this end while we're here. So now we're just going to weave in our ends as best we can. We just do it so it's a bit tidy. And you hide as much of your join as you can. So now I'm going to take it down on the inside and I'm just going to loop it through as best I can and then try to come up in the same direction. I'm trying to just get it in there. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's down a couple rows, a few rows. So now I'm going to skip something. I don't want to come back with the exact same root or it'll just pull straight out. So I'll skip something or loop onto something else. Like that little guy. And then come up the same way. That way when if it gets stretched or pulled your tails won't come out. There's like no stretch there anymore. And then carefully snip your yarn. Super cute little basket for our hooks, scissors. <laughs> Poor thing's all bent now from the fight. Uh, little basket for your desk. So cute. One more hook. Thanks for joining us while we made our desk basket. Can't wait to see pictures of yours. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Nairobi. Lots of classes to join, lots of great ladies. Happy yarning!